uh, from whom I learned this subject. So, so I'll talk about the second bundles on symmetric power of curves. I'll work uh, over the complex numbers. We say first that and C is a smooth irreducible projective curve <coughs> is take C n, this is the n fold Cartesian product. On this C n, the symmetric group S n of n elements, this acts. So the action is it permutes the any n ordered pairs of C. This is the action. And take the quotient C n mod shen. This we call a symmetric nth symmetric power. of C. So this Sn is known that since C it is a smooth irreducible projective variety. Of uh, dimension n. So an element of S and C is nothing but an unordered uh, n elements of C. So we'll typically write it an element as like x1 plus x2 plus x n C or this size then C. So this set, uh, the other set, this S and C is uh, is one 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 correspondence with this the set of all uh, effective divisors of degree n on C. So let's consider this set subset of S n D Z in S n C cross C such that this Z in, in D. So this is sort for this Z is in the support of D. This. So this we can show that this is a uh, actually smooth irreducible divisor. It's in C cross C. Actually, one can prove more that this delta n is isomorphic to S n minus one C cross C. This one. So it's called the universal effective divisor of degree n on C. Consider this diagram, this delta n is called this two projection maps q book to q1 and q is the restriction of q1. Then I'm going to prove that this is actually a n to one map, finite morphism. We start with a vector bundle E. So it's a, say E is a rank R vector bundle uh, on C. So 
So define f n e to be q2 upstar e stricted to delta n and then q lower star. So e is a vector bundle here. I pull it back, restrict it, and then push it down. So this is a rank in in our vector bundle on SNC. It is called uh, this nth second bundle of E. So this was first introduced by uh, Swarjenberger. Uh, the question, uh, okay, so before going to that, I saw some example here. So some, uh, let's say, n is 2, c is p1, the projective line. Then in this case, this the second symmetric power, this is isomorphic to P2. Can move. So example is let's say F2 O P1 1. Then that is you get O P2 direct sum of P2. So it's n equal to 2, it's a rank 2R vector model here in this case start with the line bundle, so you'll get a rank 2 vector bundle, or F2 O P1 minus 1, that will give you O P2 minus 1 direction O P2 minus 1, or C is F2 of O P2, that is, uh, sorry, O P1 that will be OP2, some OP2 minus one, this. So the question that we are uh, interested in, this, the, the stability condition, uh, the, when you're talking about stability, we're talking about this mu stability, or that Mumford Takamoto stability. That we start with a stable bundle on C, or semi-stable, what can it say about the semi-stability of this bundle, the second bundle, with respect to some suitable ampel divisor? Yes, this is the thing that if you pull back to on SN C cross C, then restrict it to that universal divisor and then push it forward. This one. So before, uh, so we, we need to choose a, uh, a suitable ample divisor. So let's say this pi is a this quotient map. This and pi. These are the ith coordinate projection. Let's take any point x in C. So define x plus Sn minus 1 C to be This as a set of SNC. This. Now, if you pull it back under this quotient map, this okay, I'm using this notation, the pullback. Then this is can prove that this is same as actually this 
pullback of points via these various uh, coordinate projections. So it's a finite map, and pullback is ample. So this, um, this is ample also. So the question that we really want is that if E is semi-stable, what can we say? Uh, sorry, PI upper studies. Thank you. Can we say about the semi-stability of this F and E with respect to this X plus S N minus one C. Uh, so rest of the lecture, uh, whenever I talk about this stability, uh, this with respect to this sample divisor, so I'll not say it again and again. So I fix this sample divisor on S and C. So, and I'll talk about this stability with respect to this sample divisor. Well, of course, one, uh, oh, sorry, I just erased, but this, uh, and without the semi, this semi-stability uh, semi stability or stability condition, we cannot have this semi-stability, we can, uh, the semi-stability of this second bundle that we already gave some examples, like for example, this F2 of O1 over, that will give you O direct sum O over P2, and F2 of O, that will give you O direct sum O minus one. So from there you can construct a lot of examples, just using some combination of that. So in this talk, we uh, actually uh, mainly focus on this case, n equal to 2. So you have this uh, S2C cross C, S2C have this delta 2. This is Q2, this is Q1, this is Q. And e is a rank or vector on C, then F2E, that's a rank 2 or vector on S2C. So the first uh, result in this, this direction of this stability comes uh, the following result it's by Laitimi, Mazoni, and Nagaraj. Let L be a very ample line model on C. Assume that genus is greater than zero, or genus equal to zero and degree of L is greater equal to two. Then this F to L is stable. Okay, here the the ample divisor is x plus c. I mean. S one C that is actually nothing but C. So you have this uh, condition that either genus greater than zero or if genus equal to zero, then degree of L has to be uh, it's greater equal to two because you see you already have this example that over P one you'll get this. So this is a necessary condition for this genus equal to zero. 
this moment. Now this result was generalized even for the case of line bundle by Biswas and Nagar. Let L be a uh, non-trivial line bundle on C, then F to L is semi-stable. So as long as it's non-trivial, we'll get it's a semi-stable. Two is F to L is stable unless L is, I mean, it's not O, the structure C. Yes. No, no, no assumption on degree of the genus. It's only that L is not the structure. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> so F to L is stable unless L is of the form O C X or O C minus X uh, for some X in X, X in C. So these are the only two possible cases where L fails to be stable. Yeah, so these are, this actually uh, more or less gives all the uh, classification for this, it settles down the case for the case of line models. Now for the higher rank case, when E is, let's start with a semi-stable bundle or stable bundle. So then for the first, uh, we have some, uh, have some partial result for rank 2 case. Hmm. Say, uh, work with Sarvish or Pal. But, uh, and in this case, we are assuming that this genus is greater or equal to 2. Uh, okay, so let's do it two way. Genus is greater or equal to 2. So E is a rank 2 vector bundle of even positive degree such that F to E is globally generated. This is the condition that we assume. Then F to E is semi-stable. This is a partial result for this uh, even degree case. For the odd degree, we'll assume the genus greater or equal to 3. I'll come to that why uh, this thing is needed. We, we take E is rank to 0, 1 stable bundle of odd positive degree such that this F to E is globally generated. Then F to E is semi-stable. So here I didn't define what is a, a zero one stable bundle is. It's a slightly stronger condition than the usual mu stability. Uh, it was defined by uh, Naksiman Ramanan. The zero one stability uh, for the genus get equal to three, that ensures that there is 
a zero one stable bundle on the curve. And if we take genus getter equal to four, then uh, if we consider this modelized space of uh, rank two degree D stable stable bundles, and this if genus getter equal to four, then the this zero one stable stable bundles are dense open subset, just dense open subset on that modelized space. So that's the result by Narsimhan and Ramanan. Okay, so these are some partial results for this rank two case. We'll come to that. Uh, we'll see that these results can be uh, this, this con these conditions can be weakened further later. So before going to this general uh, rank car case, yeah, yeah, semi-stable. Sorry. Uh, okay, let's stable. Sorry. Thank you. Stable. Stable. Now, before going to this, uh, for this general rank car vector bundle, uh, let's look at some, uh, some another description of this, uh, this second bundle. So again, uh, let's call this pi is the, this is the quotient map, and pi is the ith coordinate projection. So E is a vector bundle on C. So consider a vector bundle E tilde is on C n pi apostar E. This. Now the action of S n on the symmetric group on this C n that leads to a action on of E tilde. So it permutes the the fibers the same way it permutes that any ordered n tuples of C. So, on. so this action, uh, so from this we'll have this uh, action induces an action of uh, S n on pi lower star E tilde. So this is on, on S n C. So this action on H on the symmetric group is the the lift of a trivial action on this S and C, so on. And you take this V E, you define by lower star E tilde, and take the invariant direct, invariant image. So the invariant direct image of E tilde. So it is a proposition. So this y this was like me that this V E is isomorphic to F N. So one uh, one answer of this construction is that with this construction, this F N E that comes with a parabolic structure. So, and so Bismarck and Lightme, they studied this parabolic stability of this F and E. So, the, the parabolic divisor is, uh, you take the, uh, so, so the elements of S and C are the unordered pairs of N, of N elements of uh, C. So you take where uh, the, the the divisor is defined as where at least some of this x uh, some of at least two elements are same. For uh, I mean, you define you take this set u not inside and C, where this see the elements we already write this form. This I'm taking u not is the that open set where this none of these x i's are same. I mean, all the x i's are distinct. And you take d, the S n c minus u naught. So this is actually the complement of what we call the big diagonal. That will give the parabolic divisor. So, on. 
Okay, so now we will uh, write this result for for this general rancor uh, Victor Wandel. So, it is a result with Suratno Vasu. Let uh, we assume genus is greater or equal to 2. Let E be a Victor Wandel on C of degree D. The question is if E is semi stable and D is greater or equal to R, the, d, the degree is greater or equal to the rank, then F to E is semi stable. And two, if E is stable and degree is greater than rank, then F to E is stable. Let me say some ideas about this proof, or at least for the semi stability. So, first of all, is that this is a finite map, and so to check the semi stability, I can pull it back and can check the semi stability with respect to the pullback uh, of that ample class. So, here the the ample class here x plus c, the pullback will be x x cross c plus c cross x in the divisor form. This. So, you want to uh, check the stability, uh, semi stability with respect to this divisor of the pullback. x plus minus 1 uh, or Okay, sorry, sorry. Uh, I did This is. Well, we are talking about only this n equal to 2, sorry. Yes, I just from the previous this one. This. <coughs> yeah, so, so from the, uh, the, the alternate description of F2E, or we can do it directly that this pi up a star F2E and this p1 of a star e direct some p2 of a star e, this p1, p2 are the uh, projection on two com coordinates. So, these two are isomorphic outside the diagonal of c cross c. And there is the injection, this. Not only this is an injection, this is a it is a z mod 2 equivariant. Okay, the S2, uh, the symmetric group of two elements I am writing as a z2, z mod 2. Yeah, but this z mod 2 equivariant, this. Now, if we start with a, any destabilizing subshift of uh, pi up as f to e, if we start with a, any destabilizing subshift, since this divisor, uh, I mean this ample divisor, it, this is z mod 2, uh, I mean numerically z mod 2 equivariant. So, that says that there is a z mod 2 linearization of A such that this map is also z mod 2 equivariant. 
you have a maximal destabilizing subsheaf. And the, the ample device is also Z mod 2 equivariant. So this has a Z mod 2 linearization such that this, this map is Z mod 2 equivariant. So we have this, this is Z mod 2 equivariant. So it's sufficient to check the stability, the semi-stability, if you check only the Z mod 2 uh, linearized subsheaf, then we are done. So, and there is also one more thing is that if we take this, and if we take the compositions, we call it psi 1, psi 2. Because of this Z1 to equivariant, the kernel, uh, the rank of the kernels of both psi 1 and psi 2 are same. Similarly, the, the rank of the images of both psi 1 and psi 2 are same. This is a fact, this is a, a crucial observation that one can, uh, that will be used in the proof. So one more part is that from this inclusion that pi lowers upper star f2e to this, from this inclusion one can produce one more, uh, one can induce an exact sequence that delta is the diagonal. to P2 of a study. And similarly, you change the role of P1 and P2. And you have a, this subsheaf here, red mode to linear subsheaf here. Now you restrict this exact sequence to this curve of the form X cross C and then C cross X and look at the degree of this A restricted to C cross X and the degree of this A restricted to X cross C. So the degree of A with respect to this is just the sum of the degree, this one. So from this one can show, okay, here I didn't write it before, that this, this has this form that d minus r by r, d is the degree, r is the rank, so on. And one can so uh, it's a little numerical comp competition that this degree of a is always less or equal to zero using the stability of e and something. The degree of A is always less or equal to zero. But here, the assumption was D greater equal to R. So it's that, uh, so it's a semi stable. For the case of stability, you can do the same, uh, the same argument where, where uh, see, this is a finite map. So I start with a subsief, uh, I start with a subsief of f to e here and pull it back, then we again have the z mod to equivariant. And we do the same calculation there. In, the, in that case, we'll have that degree greater than uh, zero. The stability is also required. There are the degree greater than r. In the case of stability, that will give you that this is stable. Sorry? Yes, no, uh, but the thing is that I, I want to check the stability here, right, uh, on the, this S2C, this so one. I take a subsheaf there on S2C, then I pull it back, okay? So the Z mod to equivariance for that subsheaf is still there. No, 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 on, on, on F2E. I, I start with a subsheaf here. On there, there. Then I pull it back. There. So 
I mean, then we are in the same same kind of thing here. So, yeah. So uh, the neck, the oh, okay. So the one thing uh, that we got from this is that we have a uh, let's say, okay, assume the case degree greater than R, the, the stable modularized space of rank R degree D over curve, from there we have a morphism from rank to our C1, C2. The C1, C2 will come uh, the stable. It's a rank to our uh, stable bundles on S to C with this C1, C2 that uh, can be, that the C1, C2 is coming from the Chan character of A to E. That is this. So we have a morphism there. So the question is what kind of, what can we say about this morphism? Is there like, uh, injectivity, immersion, this kind, this thing. So, in this regard, Theorem uh, by this was and another says that if uh, here the assumption is genus is greater or equal to 2, if E1 and E2 uh, are two stable bundles. on C such that is F to E1 that is isomorphic to F to E2. Then this E1 is isomorphic to E2. This if the the second the second second bundles are isomorphic. If we start with the stable bundle, if the second second bundles are isomorphic, then this E1 and E2 are isomorphic. So the bundle we start with. So <coughs> and not only that this the, this this proof actually uh, contains uh, the, the proof actually contains a more uh, says more they actually provide a uh, way to to reconstruct E1 from F to E1. And it's not just that isomorphism, one can actually explicitly get back from E1 from F to E1. So, so here the map is E going to F to E. So from this, this theorem, using this theorem, one can show that this map is immersion, it's injective, and the tangent space level map is also injective. So, that this is an immersion. Yeah. In fact, C1, C2 can write down from the Yeah, the C1, C2 can, uh, I, I don't remember at this moment, but this C1, C2 can be write down in terms of R and D. I mean, this and the divisor. So, I mean, there's a uh, there's some explicit description of this. I mean, not only this C1, C2. I mean, actually, for this F and E, you can compute the whole Chan, chan character. So, this one. Yeah, so 
there is the one uh, thing is that let's say for a general n so here we'll do we're doing only for the case of the second symmetric power so what are the uh, condition on the nth symmetric power so the theorem that uh, it's in straight up let l be a ample line bundle uh, no no let it be a line bundle of degree d is greater than n then if an l is stable with respect to this x plus sn minus 1 c So if we start with a line bundle of degree d greater than n, then this fn l is stable on SNC with respect to the sample divisor. So if we uh, yeah, so. Uh, so actually for n equal to for uh, sorry for uh, for n equal to 2 this actually gives back that our result for there the degree was is stable and degree was greater than the rank that was the con condition here is that uh, if we start with a degree greater than n then this is the stable with respect to this thing and uh, this is we still don't know uh, whether uh, I mean we expect it but we still don't know that if we start with a stable ranker vector model then uh, it is stable with uh, the the corresponding in a second bundle is stable or not uh, that we still don't know it's only uh, for this known for this line bundle till now so on we expect it to be true but at this point we still don't know so yeah i think yeah